They need Kirk Cousins back in 2024, and it's in Kirk Cousins' best interest. Whoa, to stay whoa, in wait. Team. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop the press. Say that again. I couldn't hear you. It would be a mistake for him and for the Vikings to not want to squeeze the last bit out and see see what happens. Man, let's Maybe clip that out. Clip that out and put that on social media, team. Let's get that. You see that, everybody? You see no. that, Minnesota? Hey, Kirk Cousins, he got down to the last pedal on the flower, and he loves you. It's official. <laughs> And there it is. And Kirk Cousins is gone. It's been almost three weeks. The guy who has called every Kirk Cousins game for the last six years in Minnesota and has been doing the Vikings games on radio since, is it 2002, Paul Allen? Is it that long? Are we that 2002. old? 2002. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. And and interestingly, in well, my second season, 03, the final game of the year, of course, you know this because you're a Vikings historian, it was McCown to Nathan Poole and now Josh not only is our quarterbacks coach, but he he played with Sam Darnold, so we have a Darnold in, and he worked with Drake May at a Charlotte High School, so now I guess you have a Drake May in, if uh, indeed you're looking for one. You know, I'm ashamed of myself for not putting the Josh McCown pieces together, and I've been very well aware that that was his rookie year when he threw that pass on the old rule that you could do the force-out judgment call. Nathan Poole did not get two feet down, but the assessment was that if he hadn't been shoved, he would have gotten two feet down, touchdown. The season can end this way, but yes, it did. I still remember that very well, and now I remember that Josh McCown, yes, now with the Vikings, and tore out the Vikings' heart that year that it looked like they were going to the playoffs. All right, well, I appreciate you very much on short notice joining us today. Shereen Williams is ill. I've done an hour and 40 minutes by myself. It's great to talk Mm. to you. And let's start with Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. What's been the overall reaction among the fan base, among the people you hear from on a regular basis with Kirk Cousins choosing to leave for Atlanta and the Vikings not choosing to put the money on the table to keep him? Well, it's been interesting because, you know, I think um, a lot of fans in a habit state here in Minnesota who, you know, he, he got that three-year guaranteed piece. I mean, I guess he had the audacity to to take that, according to some. Then it's 2018. He's throwing it to the wrong team uh, more frequently than preferred, and they're getting to the end zone, like Minka Fitzpatrick and P.J. Williams, stuff like that. So it got off to a little bit of a shaky start. The offensive coordinator in his first year here got fired during the season, uh, Negan. Kevin Stefanski became the coordinator, subsequently head coach of the Browns, and uh, here we are. But the the interesting part is with uh, the Netflix series quarterback, you know, it, it's just, I mean, Kirk was portrayed in such a positive light, and and genuinely speaking, uh, that that's the authentic Kirk Cousins. Uh, well, a lot of the fan base really, really embraced that, you know, kind of like you and a lot of people watching right now. And then, you know, when, when it was like, is he going to stay and what's it going to take? And, you know, and, and why hasn't uh, the regime signed him? It, it got a little tenuous and it got a little hot. But, but then he got that, that hundred million piece. And, you know, people were like, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't think many people were, were willing to, if they, if they were to be general managers, pay that at, at Kirk's age. I love Kirk, but I mean, that was a lot more than I thought it was going to be too. And with the general manager, Kwesi Adolfo Mensa, you know, the, the, the 2022 draft, his first draft, hasn't, hasn't really done the team any favors with all due respect at this stage. Um, the third year coming up, hopefully some of them turn some things around. Uh, so that got off to a little bit of a weird start. Uh, but now people are starting to realize that part of the job for Kwesi is to get the roster younger, find free agency money, and I guess find lines of delineation and and draw lines in the sand like he did with this Cousins deal. And he didn't budge. And now I know why he didn't budge. So uh, now we head to the draft in search of a quarterback with um, Sam Darnold, Nick Mullins, and uh, Jaron Hall in the mix uh, around here. So fan base not mad about the outcome? No. It's, I mean, and I know this is characteristic of the folks of the in Minnesota. They're not inclined to be mad about anything, but they understand why – Cousins left, and they understand why the Vikings didn't say, we'll give you $100 million fully guaranteed. Yes. Well, but see, the thing for Kirk is he repeatedly said, whether on or off the microphone, you know, I want to finish my career in Minnesota. And, and knowing Kirk the way I do, 
he meant that. I mean, he really, really loved it here. So did his family. And I know you got a chance um, at the Super Bowl to meet Julie and to, you know, learn about their family and stuff. And, and I would imagine that you probably felt that genuine Minnesota feel from them. So people didn't even bang him about that when he left and went to Atlanta because it's like, well, you know, it, it could be, well, what do you mean? You said you wanted to be here forever. Oh, wait, it's that? Oh, all right. I get it. You know, so it was it was really like that. My theory over the past week or so has evolved into the Vikings really didn't want to continue the relationship, but they didn't want to create the impression that they were the ones who were pulling the plug on it. When Mark Wolf Ooh. said at the league meetings that they only offered a full guarantee for the first year of the contract, if you're not going to guarantee into year two, you're not going to keep Kirk Cousins. Somebody else is going to guarantee into week two. This guy's used to having fully guaranteed contract. And right. if the Falcons are doing 90 over two plus an extra 10 they can't get out of unless they cut him after one, that's $100 million he's going to make. If the Vikings are only going one year and the – the complaint or concern or whatever I'd heard from Kirk was it's basically become a year to year arrangement for him in Minnesota. He wants something yeah. more than year to year. He wants more control and more security than year to year. And the Vikings wanted the flexibility to move on from him if that's what they decide to do. So I think that maybe they wanted us to think keeping Kirk cousins is plan a and that plan B is let's see who we can get in the draft. It could be plan a is let's get our franchise quarterback in the draft. And plan B was, okay, we'll keep Kirk Cousins if we can keep him on our terms. Well, I mean, it could be, but, you know, let's 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 hearken to that Kevin O'Connell interview he did with um, Daniel Jeremiah and maybe Rich Eisen on NFL Network the final Saturday of the Combine. And, I mean, during the football season, I do a weekly sit-down with O'Connell. I tape a, um, I, I also tape a pregame interview with him every week, and I've gotten a – I adore the guy. And, and I think he's authentic, he's genuine, he really, really cares. His ability to work with players through turmoil and, and, and through consternation – um, you know, given his age and his relatability to uh, to players in their 20s, I think Kevin's fantastic. So with all that said, I'm not exactly sure Kevin, you know, was completely comfortable with Kirk leaving um, because that that NFL Network interview, man, you could just kind of tell. And, and you write about this all the time at PFT, uh, you know, way about what happens at the combine, I guess, stays at the combine and the tampering and stuff like that. But that Saturday, man, watching O'Connell, when he, you know, you could just tell that he kind of caught wind. Holy cow, something has happened here. And there's like zero chance that we're going to combat it. And and Kevin wears his emotions on his sleeve, man, and on his face. And I could tell he was sad. I mean, C Cousins was lights out here, man, um, before he popped that Achilles at Lambeau. You know that. But he got better every single year. And and, um, you know, with what Flores did with the defense last year, the majority of the season, and then now who they have this year, some new players they added, you know, I think Kevin looks at it like, man, we're kind of sitting on something here. But, you know, the quarterback spot's going to matter. Now, this draft, you know, it's it's when we were at the Combine in 2020 before the pandemic, the, I mean, all the right people were saying how deep the wide receiver draft was. I'm an old schooler, man. I'm like, pump the brakes. Let me go ahead and watch him for a couple of years and see what happens. Well, they were right. Uh, last year, I heard a lot about how deep the tight ends were in the draft, and they were right again. It was a super deep tight ends draft. This is a very, 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 very deep quarterbacks draft. I'm telling you right now, there are going to be quarterbacks taken on Saturday who get second contracts as starters. So with 11 and 23, I think the metaphorical writing is on the wall to uh, to move up and get a quarterback. The question would be who. And the way Kwesi Adolfo Mensa and the Vikings personnel staff have played this offseason, it's been phenomenal. I mean, Aaron Jones is a Viking. It took like two minutes to get him here. Are you kidding me? That's 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 incredible. Um, and then with the rest of the players, Kwesi has emptied uh, the, the, the proverbial chamber uh, with all the bullets. However, the silver bullet is in a month, and it has to hit. If the silver bullet misses the beast, which would be the quarterback, then there could be a problem. But Quasi and staff have done terrific work this offseason. I think there's a quiet confidence in the organization, and it may put too much pressure on Kevin O'Connell and make his life harder than it would have been, especially if he would have continued the relationship with Kirk Cousins. The idea that whoever they give him, 
whatever lump of clay is put in front of him, he is going to mold into a great quarterback. And I've been making the argument that if I'm one of these guys coming into the draft this year and I'm looking at the teams in the top half of round one, I'm circling the Vikings because I'm confident if I work with Kevin O'Connell, he's going to get me to my absolute maximum performance level and right. we can join at the hip for 15 years. You look at these guys who are going to end up with – a defensive head coach and an offensive coordinator who, if things go well, is going to leave. And then here comes another offensive coordinator. And if it goes well, he's going to leave and become a head coach. Eventually I'm going to get an offensive coordinator who isn't good enough to get the most out of me. It's going to cause me to regress. I want the Sean Payton, Drew Brees relationship. I want 15 years with one coach. That would be very attractive to me. So I think whoever lands with the Vikings is going to be in the best position to get to his absolute maximum, whatever his absolute maximum may be. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, I do. And and I and not simply because I'm voice of Vikings guy, but I've seen it for two years now. And and you know, they threw sixty one percent of the time Kevin's first year here. Cousins was terrific. They win thirteen games. We we go through that four quarterback carousel last year, which which, you know, at times was miserable. And like, you know, when when the Dobbs trick was up, uh, Hall came in. That didn't work. When Mullins played, granted there were some turnover problems, but it looked like a Kevin O'Connell offense because Nick knows how to run an offense. Sam Darnold knows how to run a passing offense. Um, Cousins obviously does too. So I agree with you on that. You know, and and the 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 piece the pieces are falling into place. I mean, if you're reading ProFootballTalk.com this morning, and I, I didn't know this until before we did this, you got Brian Kelly. Basically, I mean, just coming right out and saying Jaden Daniels is going to the commanders. I believe Kelly. So now we're going Williams Daniels. Uh, Kraft can put on his fan hat and want a quarterback all he wants and be like they're going to be desperate teams. He's right. There are desperate teams. And maybe somebody comes way, way, way up with a ton and overpays. Uh, I don't see that happening. I think they take a quarterback. So now Arizona's the wild card here with uh, with Denver, Vegas, and the Vikings, and maybe um, a wild cardish team in the top ten that that really nobody's talking about right now. And they have six picks in the top ninety, including four and twenty seven. So uh, that's the target for me as of right now for McCarthy or May. Personally speaking, I would prefer May by that much. I don't watch enough college football to pretend like I'm an expert. Uh, but in in putting the the pieces together, that's kind of what I think it's leading to. So, what do you think the Patriots are going to go? Bo Nix at three, and then it's going to be May or or Bo McCarthy Nicks. available at four. That's what you're thinking. Where the hell did you get? Where the hell Bo did you get N- Bo Nix at three? Well, who's going to three then? If the Patriots take a quarterback, McCarthy. Who's who's after McCarthy? Oh, you say you said McCarthy or May. I see what you're saying. I got you. I got you. Yeah, it, my well, bad. Bo Nix is up there too. If you listen to Sims, Bo Nix oh, is up there rounder. at three. Okay. Yeah. He's got well, he's I mean, down the, on May. He's got May at sixth out of six. So I don't know about he, May. Well, we okay, gotta, we I understand go. that. And I'm not one to argue. I was gonna with ask you one last minds. question. Let me put a pin in this. I yeah. gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah, well, so do but I. But we have McCown. I don't know. forget when, that. When we talk the next time, I want you to tell me which round draft pick the Vikings are gonna get from the tampering that the Falcons blatantly engaged in with Kirk Cousins. And I say I can't wait to see you and young Alexander at the Vikings Falcons game at U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Vikings against Kirk O'Chains. It's going to be great. Thank you. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.